Traveling the world for months on end, experiencing life in new countries and faraway places, all while still getting paid. Your office is wherever you can find a Wi-Fi connection. It's the dream, but how do you do it? logistically speaking, day to day. Nobody likes dragging around loads of luggage, so this is what I'm answering in today's video. My name's LaShawn, I love solo travel, I've been living abroad for the past six years, and one of the things I've really gotten into since moving to Europe is this whole idea of only traveling with one bag, making the most of all the cheap flights across the continent and beyond, which for the best prices tend to limit you to just your carry-on. Over the years, I've really honed in what I pack with me on my travels to make use of what little space I have. And I recently returned from a trip back home to Australia and the Philippines from London with my one bag, where I was digital nomading and working remotely from Oz for a few weeks. Getting some of that summer sun while it's cold and miserable in London did wonders for my seasonal depression. Help me please. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what I pack with me to have a perfectly functional remote working setup on the go while still having everything for travel fun with you too in one bag. Whether you're looking to be a full-on digital nomad living years on end abroad, or you just want to work remotely from a cafe a few days a week, there should be something in this video for you. I'm going to go through everything from the backpack I use to headsets, adapters, chargers, laptops, mice, clothing, how I stay fit while abroad, and also all the camera video gear I take with me on my travels, including my drone, while packing it into my bag. Everything I have has been optimized to save space and weight, all while still performing incredibly well. Links for everything are in the description, just below the subscribe button. Just gonna note that as a guy, one of the places I really cut down on was in clothing, but this can still be useful if you wanna save space elsewhere. And you can always bring another bag if necessary. It's just nice to travel light, you know? All right, let's get into it. Starting with the backpack. All right, so a lot of things happened between that cut and this one. Turns out I'm actually going somewhere. Today, in about one hour and 20 minutes, I have to catch my bus. So we're gonna make this quick. This is gonna be a real pack for a real digital nomad trip. Let's get started. So first things first, the bag. This is the Osprey Farpoint 40. So I've done a full review of this backpack on the Bright Tip YouTube channel if you'd like to check it out. This is the ultimate one bag travel backpack. Since I made that video, I've taken it with me on 25 trips through 20 countries and can happily vouch for it. It is battle tested. The only wear and tear I've gotten is a little bit of stretch marks on these outer pouches, which I think are meant for water bottles. But once you pack the bag fully, you can barely fit anything in them. So when you do, like, it really stretches the netting. But even then, no tears whatsoever. This bag is amazing, incredible build quality and durability. And I'm saying that as someone who does not treat their gear too kindly. I was sleeping on this many a time um, in the airport. It meets the maximum dimensions for a standard size carry-on, but it's bigger than what's allowed for budget airlines as the hand luggage with the absolute cheapest fare. So you might have to pay extra to take this with you if you get caught, that is. I've taken this with me as my only bag for the last three years, and I've only been caught twice. I've noticed if I just risk it most flights, I think nine times out of 10, 19 times out of 20, I get away with it. There's a lot of precautions you can take to avoid getting fined, but overall, if you can go with the cheapest fare, most of the time the airlines don't care as the plane isn't full, and you will save hundreds of pounds or euros or what have you over time. My logic is I weigh 62 kilos, so if everyone on the plane weighed the same as me, I would save the airline millions of dollars a year. So having a slightly bigger backpack doesn't really bother me too much. I do pack a lot of stuff that you might not need, like my workout gear and my photography video equipment. So if you don't need that stuff, you can easily do the same pack with a 30 liter backpack that will match all the carry-on dimensions and you won't have any trouble. So now, digital nomad gear. First things first, how are you going to power your gear? I highly recommend this universal adapter. So this is a Momax One World a 65 watt GAN charger. Back a few years ago, you could easily get a box charger like this that can adapt to basically anything. They have prongs for US, Australia, if you just twist them like this, UK, EU, 
but you'd have these low power USB ports. But now tech has advanced quite a bit. And now you can get this, which has gallium nitride technology in it, which essentially lets you pack in a way more powerful charger into essentially the same size. If you plug something into this USB-C port, you can charge at 65 watts, which is enough to charge a laptop. So if you wanna charge your laptop anywhere in the world, you just plug this box into the wall, um, put a USB-C cable into here. I use this one. It's like three meters, works great, linked down below. And that's it. This and that, and you can charge your laptop which is absolute game changer because then you don't need an additional brick. But if you have a beefier laptop, you can buy a 100 watt version of this. It's just a little bit taller, but otherwise still super compact for what you're getting. Essentially what you need to charge all your stuff on the go is this and a bunch of USB cables. That's it. Ideally, as many of your things USB-C as possible. If everything's USB-C, then you really just need a handful of cables just to charge multiple things at once. So I'm just gonna stuff that in there. Next up, headset. This is super important. So I have this Plantronics Voyager UC right here. It's a wireless headset, but you don't need to get the wireless one. The wired Plantronics or Poly headsets work just as well. They rebranded to Poly recently, but any of them should work incredibly well just because the built-in noise cancellation, voice isolation, software, hardware on here is magic. If you want to take calls on the go, you can just plug in your AirPods or wireless earbuds, but I've noticed when I try those things, they do tend to pick up a lot of the background noise. Whereas these, especially if you pair it with the USB dongle, the noise cancellation on here is genuinely insane. I can put these on, I can be in a cafe with a speaker blasting down music directly at me, and if I'm on a Teams call, None of that gets picked up, only my voice. I've never had any complaints, but as soon as I go off these and I have to use my earbuds for whatever reason, I immediately get comments about background noise. But with these, nothing. That is a game changer because this will let you take calls pretty much anywhere you want to. And if you combine it with one of these, just like a generic foam uh, microphone cover. These don't fit very well, but I got them off Amazon. Pop them on to the microphone stalk like that. That will also help you take calls outside if you wanna do them outside. If you get the wireless one, make sure you get the USB dongle that comes with it because most of the audio processing tech is inside that dongle and also lets you use other features like the mute button on the stalk here. It comes with a case. It's nice to keep everything protected. The only catch with this specific model, I'm sure the new ones don't, but uh, this charges with micro USB. So I just have this little micro USB to USB-C dongle. So I can just plug that into this and then I can charge it pretty much anywhere. Put that into this pouch and also the dongle. And then next, mouse. You can get by with a laptop touchpad, but in most cases you'd prefer a mouse, right? So I recommend this, which is the Logitech MX Anywhere 3. Charges via USB-C. It's very precise. It has like the infinity scroll, a couple custom buttons, like back forward buttons. Very small, charges very quick. You can easily switch between three different devices using the key on the bottom. I can fit it into the headset pouch. So I just do that. So this is the core of the remote working setup. This and the adapter. So I'll throw that in here. I tend to keep the, the smaller pouch in the front for the laptops and slimmer tech. So next up, battery pack. So this is an Anker 537 power bank. So it looks quite big, bulky. If I compare it to the size of my phone, which is a Galaxy S21, it's only a little bit bigger. 24,000 milliamp hours, which is a ton of power. You can charge your phone maybe four times, five times, depending on the size. And you can also fast charge your phone. It can charge a laptop, which in the case you are working from a cafe and you can't access any power points to charge up your laptop directly from the wall. You can just plug it into this. It will drain very fast, but it will give you an extra 50%, 60%, depending on the size of your laptop. When you buy battery packs off Amazon, I bought other ones like the Charmas 20,000 milliamp hour battery, which says it's 20,000 milliamp hours, but I noticed it was just a lot less than advertised. And it was very light, very cheap. It just drained very, very quickly. This one, I can definitely vouch for it actually being the size that they claim it is. It's also very pretty. I put this into the top there because I might use it on the plane. I have to hurry up. 
car. Next up, bank cards. Bit of a tangent to the packing situation, but how are you gonna spend your money on the go? If you live in the UK, I highly recommend Starling for a debit card because they have really good cash withdrawal limits for overseas. It's a lot better than Monzo where they let you withdraw up to 300 pounds per month overseas, whereas Starling Bank lets you withdraw 200 pounds per day which if you're in a country which is cash only is a complete game changer. But anyone else abroad, transfer wise works really well even though it's not a bank or Revolut. But also in the UK, if you want a credit card, I'd recommend, if you can get it, Barclay card because it's a Visa credit card. If you're going somewhere and you want to rent a car, a lot of the time they might require you to put a deposit on a credit card and not accept any debit cards whatsoever. So this one, especially because it's Visa, so it's more accepted everywhere than say American Express, highly recommend. And also I use it overseas because the rates are essentially the exchange rate. Same as Google, same goes for Starling, for Monzo, TransferWise, Revolut. I just carry that with me. Of course, laptop. You probably already have your own or have one provided from work, but I personally love my ASUS ROG Flow X13. This is a 2021 model. It's super slim, it has a video card in it touch screen, powerful enough for not so intensive video editing if you're not using like After Effects and stuff, photo edit. I highly recommend this just because of how slim and light it is. It's very good for working on the go. The only negative really is the touchpad. Is it maybe a bit too small? I'll keep using it for the next couple of years, especially since I upgraded the hard drive to two terabytes recently. You probably already have your own, but just get a nice thin light 13 inch laptop. That's what I recommend. Edit a Latan here. I know I'm doing one of those, but I forgot to mention one thing in my haste of packing, which is storage. How are you going to store all your photos and videos if that's what you do while you're on the go in something nice and light and fast? I've been using this thing for years and I'm going to have to bring you all the way down here because I'm actually using it right now. This Samsung T7 2 terabyte SSD. So I've been using this thing for over a year, maybe two years, I'm not sure. And before that, I was using a previous model, the Samsung T3 one terabyte since 2016. These things are built to last. They're crazy fast. You could throw them across the room. They'll be totally fine. So I use these as my working drives, not just on the go, but in general, because I'm someone who likes to switch between laptop and desktop. So if you're someone who does switch between multiple computers, it is super handy to have all your footage on something you can just take with you from computer to computer to computer. I just have all my working files on there and I can edit all my photos, videos, no performance issues whatsoever, not MKBHD or anything. So two terabytes is plenty for me. I can put like two years worth of photos on there and my current video project, totally fine. And then as I get through stuff, I just delete them off the drive and have it backed up elsewhere. I say two years of photos because I'm actually two years behind, wait, no, one and a half. I'm making progress. But yeah, I just wanted to jump in and recommend that. And now back to the video. That's basically the digital nomad specific stuff. So you got your headset, your mouse, you got your battery pack in here. You have your universal charger and your laptop. That's basically it. I wouldn't bring a webcam or anything, but yeah, with this setup, everything has been optimized to be as light, portable, and as good as you can get it in that size. This is how I work pretty much anywhere, whether it's digital nomading or working from cafe. Hopefully that was helpful. Now we're moving on into everything else I pack. So I have my resistance bands. I use these to work out every day for 15 minutes each morning. I only pack four resistance bands and two push-up handles. I started working out in 2017, 2018. I used to go to the gym five days a week spending like an hour each time. And then in 2020, the pandemic hit, so I couldn't go to the gym anymore. I still needed to work out somehow. And after a month of deteriorating, I discovered resistance bands and I have not been to a gym since. These things are incredible. Like you can get a full body workout with these in 15 minutes. And that's enough for me to maintain my muscle. If I wanna build muscle on top of that, I just do a few more sets. But the best thing about this is that I don't need to go to the gym anymore. I can take these with me anywhere. I take these with me everywhere I go on my travels. And yeah, they're so compact. Hasn't really been too much of a burden traveling, especially since they're super light. If you're someone who likes to keep fit, but finds it difficult to keep working out on their travels, this is a game changer, absolute game changer. Cause I remember when I was traveling through Mexico and Guatemala in 2019 for three weeks, by the second week or week and a half, you just actively feel your muscles deteriorate and you're just desperate for a gym. So instead of wasting your time on your travels, 
trying to find a gym, paying for gym memberships for a day, which are always super expensive, you just have these. And this is your gym. You just travel with your gym. If you want to know more, I highly recommend you check out the Undersun Fitness YouTube channel run by this guy named James Great. It is like the Bible for anything resistance band related. Everything I know is from there. So I just stuff those in the bottom of my bag, put everything else in here. Next up, clothing. Obviously this is super personal and this is where I really tend to cut down what I bring with me. But if you need something to keep you warm, I highly recommend this Uniqlo Ultralight down jacket. This is enough to keep me warm with maybe a layer or two underneath, up to zero degrees. It's windproof, it's pretty water resistant, up to a point but it's just like an incredibly useful layer to have for cold climates or nighttime you can wear a t-shirt and put this on in nighttime if you're feeling a little cold because it just compacts down into essentially nothing it comes with this pouch so you just stuff it in like this and yeah that's it weighs essentially nothing can double as a pillow on your flight to wherever you're going and yeah, I don't pack this in the bag though, I tend to wear it. And for colder climates, definitely recommend merino wool base layers because they're very warm, but they also won't have you overheating if it does get a bit hot where you are. And as wool products, they're naturally antibacterial and essentially have self-cleaning properties. It sounds disgusting, but you can wear them multiple days on end and they'll be fine. All you have to do is let them air out for like a little bit and you're good. Might have lost a couple people with that one. Now I'm finally starting to pack this bag as I need to because I'm leaving f***ing 20 minutes or something. Jesus Christ. Okay, how many pairs? So it's like four pairs of underwear plus what you're wearing. When you are packing this bag, just zip it up a little bit and then start packing it uh, top down. Helps you pack in a lot more stuff than you probably could otherwise. The socks, four pairs of socks. There's another pair of socks inside my resistance bands bag. Plus another pair, one pair of long socks. Make sure they're wool, cause they'll keep you warm and will generally stay clean for multiple wears as well. So I will wear these when I go. Workout gear, so just have a tank top and shorts. So we'll be zipping this thing up. Travel towel, very important. Packs down into nothing, dries crazy fast. Just one pair of swimmers. Sleepwear. I have one linen shirt, which I tend to wear on myself. Earplugs, because I'm staying in a hostel. Very important. This will save you your sanity. Don't be one of those people who complains of uh, others coming in late at night. Like that's a given with any hostel. So you might as well just take the precautions. Assume someone's gonna do something loud that might wake you up and just prepare for it. It's that simple. Just wear earplugs. So now that we've packed all the remote working gear and clothing and workout stuff, now we're into the electronics and charges section. I have 15 minutes to do this. This depends on what electronics you have. If everything charges via USB-C, all you need is a few cables plus that adapter. So I just bring two extras in addition to the other one which I've already packed. Just stuff that into the front pocket here. And then I just bring other charges which I cannot get to USB-C. So my Garmin Descent Mark II S charger here. And then a charger for my earbuds which are these. These Aftershocks Aeropex, they've rebranded recently to Shocks. These are great for running and anything where you need your ears to be open to your surroundings. It's gonna be a little hard to illustrate because I'm filming with it right now, but the camera. So filming with the Sony a7C, full frame camera, super compact, films 4K30, 120 frames a second in 1080p, has all the internals of an a7 III, plus a little better color science. It's just in a compact body. So they've recently come out with a new version of it, the a7C Mark II, which I do want to upgrade to because it's fixed the couple things that I thought were wrong with this camera, which is it's lacking a front dial. The new one has a front dial. One more custom button. It can shoot 10 bit video and it can shoot lossless compressed raw files, which as someone who started out as a photographer as well as a video person is huge. The microphone is a Sony ECM G1, which is great. A very tiny microphone, which slots onto the smart hot shoe on the top of the camera. Instead of it, sometimes I also bring my Rode Wireless Go 2 lav microphone setup, which is quite handy because you can have two microphones, you can do interviews, they are way better at isolating your voice. This one, it's slightly better than the inbuilt microphone, to be perfectly honest. I like it just because it's small and light. It makes me more likely to use it while filming, whereas 
the wireless go 2 there's more of a setup process which makes it a bit more burdensome pack that into the bag generally on the top so i won't pack it in now obviously because i'm filming moving on gopro so i have this gopro hero 9 black in a dive case because i'm gonna go scuba diving this thing works great it is tempting to upgrade to the new ones for the 8x7 sensor but as someone who doesn't use the gopro too often it doesn't seem worth it to me just yet but one day maybe in two years so as you can see we haven't even packed half the bag. So if you just remove the workout gear, if you don't want to work out and just shove in more clothes, you'll still have tons of space. Also, this little thing here, it is a phone mount for your car. So if you want to rent a car, in most cases they don't have GPS, you can just shove this onto your dashboard and there you go. Get directions with your phone. Very handy. I'm so glad I bought it because Trying to navigate with your phone in your lap is extremely dangerous. How much time do I have? So next up is drone. So I have this DJI Mini 3 Pro. Super tiny. It's 249 grams, so you don't need a license. You do have to use the remote control with it though. I got this one, which is the remote control with the built-in screen. Essentially like an Android phone built into the remote control. And I got this case from AliExpress, so I don't need to take off the joysticks when I'm not using it. So the case on, I can just sort of shove it into the bag and good to go. Yeah, easy, almost there. Next up is tripod. So this is a Velbon UT3AR. Absolutely tiny. Um, the only catch, it doesn't go extremely tall. It goes as tall as this, but it's extremely light. If you're someone who's been eyeing that Peak Design travel tripod, this will get you most of the benefits at a fraction of the price. So highly recommend, I think it's a Japanese brand. They probably have similar other brands in case you can't find this online. I have a link to this or something like this in the description down below. And just like throw it into your backpack and forget it's even there. Speaking of, I just reminded myself, I need a backpack, not this backpack, but a day pack. Big fan of this. This is just a Quechua Decathlon 10 liter backpack. It literally cost four euros. Roll it up into nothing. You could wear it under your jacket onto the plane if you wanted to. Um, essentially a sack with a little bit of padding, but it will carry your gear. I can shove my laptop into it if I try really hard. Also with my camera, I carry it with a Peak Design strap and Arca Swiss dual tripod plate. So I'm nearly done. Two more things. Headphones. These are the Sony WF-1000 XM5s. I just got these. I just upgraded from the XM4s. Even though the XM4s were great, these are so much better just because of how small and how light it is. I have it in this fake leather case I got from AliExpress. Excellent noise cancellation. Also for calls, it is fantastic. Sometimes I do wear my WH-1000 XM3, so like full-size headphones, which are useful on flight because the frame gives you something to rest your head onto if you have a window seat or something. But I just find them too bulky and too much of a pain to carry around when I get to my location. So I just prefer to have the earbuds. They're great for the flight and just for music in general, but they're not such a pain day to day. That is the pack. Oh my God. Oh no, oh no, oh no, shit. Okay, I'm just gonna pack right now. Travel journal, I love journaling. Passport. <laughs> Toiletries. I just don't bring any liquids like toothpaste or body wash or anything like that. I buy it after I arrive. So just toothbrush, razor blade, head off because those things are hard to find. They don't take my face, so it's fine. Fuck, fuck, lock, sunglasses. Find my keys. Where the fuck? Hand sanitizer. So for shoes, I generally bring a pair of runners, and then I'll have these. It's a Vivo Barefoot. Recently got into barefoot running. Oh my god, I need to run. Run, run, run. And I think that's everything. Yep. If it's not, geez. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is a very quick, very hastily at the end, pack of my Digital Nomad toolkit and everything else I pack with me on my travels. If you like that, make sure I don't miss my flight. I need to go. But yes, make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed that and let me know if you would like more Digital Nomad content in the future because this is something I'm really passionate about and I would love to make some more. I have a flight to catch. So I'll see you in the next one. Lashawn, out. Cool.